Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Condo Insider. And today I'm Raylene Tenno, your host. And today we have um, Carol with um, and Dathan. They're both condo specialists with the real estate branch of ECCA. So they have lots of years of experience with them under their belt. Um, so we were kind of the subject that we're going to talk about today is when you make a request or re, uh, an inquiry into your either your condo board or even the managing agent because there seems to be a lot of um, complaints or concerns. Um, I know I get a lot of um, emails and complaints about um, people not responding. So we want to kind of talk about like you know like give everybody a chance to respond. You don't need to give a reasonable amount of time to, for people to respond to your request, whether it be email or phone call. Um, but so. What would be, um, if, an, if for the both of you, if a homeowner makes an um, inquiry to the property manager and they're um, making like a simple request, maybe something about their, their um, probably the most common would be their maintenance fees. Like um, maybe they're late or letting them know that they're gonna make a payment or maybe they wanna know what their balance is. Um, what would you think would be, or what would you say would be a reasonable time period for that property manager or someone within that company to respond back um, to that email or even that telephone call. I'd like to thank you for you know, inviting us today. We appreciate it very much. And I think one of the things that helps understand um, what you're talking about today, where it appears that the board is not responsive or the managing aid not responsive, there's a couple of basic concepts that are really important the condominium living. And the first one, of course, is to remember that the legislature drafted statute, the Condo Act, self enforcement, basically. So that's really important. And the statute itself doesn't cover every single instance of what can happen in a particular condo. We look to it for guidance, but it doesn't cover you know, every single situation. And I think then common sense rather kicks in. You know, remembering that all of the owners are members of the association and they elect other owners to be their board and that board, they may be even their neighbors on the board. So I think it's, um, keep in mind that, you know, acting, you know, mature, adult, civil manner is, is very helpful in this context. And then I think finally, one of the basic concepts too is the fact that you certainly need to have understanding of the role of the board and then the role of the managing agent. Because the role of the board is like basically to do the business of the board, as you say, requesting documents and whatnot. And the board itself can only act as a whole. So if you feel like you've made a request for a document, but you know, you're standing in the elevator next to somebody who happens to be a director, you know, on a Friday night, that there are better ways to handle that kind of situation than thinking that you've actually made a request. In addition, a lot of the managing agents, you know, they're, they're vendors, they're under contract and they're contracted to do various things. So sometimes it may not be the managing agent that has the ability or authority to do those things, but then you need to go back again to the topic of the board. But that's like the best practice when we have Kinds of situation trying to get information um, is to make sure you're asking the right person or the right entity. And if you don't know, then ask that person or entity, well, who do I ask? How do I get this information? That's you know one kind of tip whenever you do it, because you would do that anyway if you called up, you know, the credit card company about something and they say, oh, you know, you're calling the wrong department. You know, here we'll get you a referral to another department. And then also whether the information actually exists and then the availability of the information. If there is an issue, I think the best thing to do is be sure to keep a written record uh, of your request, not just verbal request. And also, um, you know, be reasonable about it, you know, asking. You know, the director happened to be in the elevator on a Friday night, a three day weekend, and you want it by the morning. You know, it's, it's a business standard. It's not really reasonable to do that. 
and then ask you your, uh, you know, question. Um, in, you know, in general, of course, the first, since the statute doesn't necessarily say, you know, what's a simple inquiry or what is a reasonable inquiry or, you know, timelines, it's not that specific. Um, first place I would always uh, tell someone is, you know, check your governing document. See if there's something in there that, you know, sets forth a procedure or some sort of, you know, board resolution or procedure. Um, and if not, you know, reasonable business practice, basically. Because the statute itself, the only time it adjusts requests for information in general is um, under the association responsibilities, basically that um, if there's going to be a charge for providing requested information, then the association has to notify the unit owner at least 10 days prior to incurring the cost. But other than that, the statute is actually silent. So I would say, you know, going back to the, the best business practice. So I mean, I mean, I I I'm in a business, and um, even a lot of my associates, whether they work in different industries or what, I mean, we've had this conversation before with, um, you know, whenever we've talked, um, you know, and and everybody seems to come up with like. I give myself at least 24 to 48 hours to reply. And, you know, and they say that they even tell, tell me that they tell people, if I don't reply within that time frame, send me another email to remind me, you know, um, I was talking to a, um, the office manager at one condo and they have like over 2000 units. And I go, how do you handle that? And she said that she, you know, checks her email daily. And then she also goes into the, um, her sent folder. To make sure she did the replies you know um but sometimes it's not something that she can respond to because it would be maybe like the the general manager has to respond or the president has to respond or something like that but oftentimes she'll have to have to chase them down so i always tell people i said it depends on what what you're asking for um if it's something really complicated yeah you might have to give them give them like 48 hours if you don't have a response send another request you know, second request, I'm just, you know, asking for this again, in case you lost the email. I mean, I've done that. It just gets kind of buried in that sea of emails you get every day. And, um, and it can happen. So sometimes you have to do, like, sometimes I'll say, oh, okay, just a brain tickler, just a reminder, I'm requesting this information again, you know. Um, but it's not where, to me, it's not where the, um, the sender of the email is like, to me, it's unreasonable for them to expect an immediate response. Um, not everybody just sits at their day responding to emails. They've got appointments throughout the day. Um, they've got properties that they got to be on site with. Um, and some of these property managers are working at night because they have board meetings to attend to. So um, my rule of thumb is always tell them, I go, give them a reasonable time period. You know, um, 24 hours to me sometimes is not reasonable. Um, and and even for a property manager, sometimes they, they need to scan their emails. I mean, and I've actually gotten a little bit more detailed in my subject where um, I'll ask what I, whatever I want, I'll put it in the subject line. Because it's easier for them to scan, you know, like scan their emails by the subject. And um, sometimes they get a faster response, you know, depending on what the question is. But it's sometimes you get a little bit of an, a faster response on how you format the email request. So, um, but what would what happen if, after after you've done the first request the second request and it's like you're it seems like you're being totally ignored you know you've done a phone call to follow up saying hey, i sent you an email you know on this date i sent another email on this date and i'm still not getting a response what does what does the condo specialist of dcca recommend to a homeowner in those situations one thing i would like to point out too um and i'm sure david's probably about to say this there is one part of the statute that is much more specific, and that's when the request for information involves actual documents. Now there, the statute is very thorough, has several sections dealing with it, makes clear what documents to be available and what documents need to be provided. And that, in that case, there is sort of a, a ruler that you go by and they typically it's like um 
you know, 15 days for minutes and basically 30 days for, you know, everything else. So that is, um, I think, a good guideline as far as, you know, responding to things. Well, I think it's going to be easier in, for those kind of things because, like, Associa is now on Town Square, Hawaiian Properties is on Town Square. I'm not sure about Hoiana. I think they're on Town Square. So a lot of the documents now now are online. As long as you log in and set up your account, you know. But um, so some of those, um, I, I would I want to say frequently asked ones are pretty much being posted um, because before you had to request them or pay the arm and a leg through DocuTrieve and get those documents. But um, now it should be a little bit easier, but if they're asking for something that really is not your standard document to be posted, like that is posted and available for everybody to see, you know, um, you know, like I know everybody always asks for the managing agents or not the managing, well, one well, could be the managing agents contract or one of the other ones that I always hear people ask for is the employee um, employment contract. I'm like, why do you want that for? But, um, they, you know, and they go, well, we want to know how they get paid. I go, really? You really don't need to look at the contract. Look at your financials. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's other ways to get the information if you know how to get it, you know, but they make a big deal out of it. You know, even though you tell them, I go, look at some of the financials. Your board member or homeowner, it's in your financials. It's in the budget, right? You know, okay. so, um, but what if it's something that they just are not getting a recent, I mean, a decent response from anybody? Well, I would say, and, and Dave, please, you know, add to this, but we, the Real Estate Commission is very much in support of alternative resolution. So if you have taken all of the, you know, feel reasonable, necessary, patient steps, and still there's, there's an issue, the Real Estate Commission provides subsidized mediation, um, two different kinds of mediation, as well as, um, if you, you know, that doesn't quite work out to be evaluative, then moving on to alternative um, voluntary binding arbitration, uh, which again is subsidized. You can tack that one up to $1,000. So the commission has very carefully procured certain vendors, mediators, and arbitrators, and it's all published on the website. Um, and so, and it's all done directly, you know, by the parties. The, if it's like a homeowner requesting mediation, and you know uh, the certain topics, you know, the survival, expectation, that sort of thing. It is a shall rule, and we, you know, they have both facilitative and evaluative mediation. But you know, as a practical matter, like we talked about a little bit earlier, I mean, these are owners, these are your neighbors. Um, wouldn't you rather go to mediation and establish lines of communication rather than fighting all the time and glaring at each other, you know, in the stairwell? You know, it's there and it's you know, subsidized, it's handled completely outside of the office. You know, the, like the owner has the issue, contacts the mediator directly, they set it all up, take care of it, and they send the real estate commission the bill, which I think is really the most civilized and you know, best way to handle these sort of things. What do you think of the mediation, Jason? Um, yeah, I think that's a good method. It doesn't necessarily work for everyone. Um, sometimes, I don't know if this nice. Sometimes the mediator has to nudge someone into realizing that maybe what the request is not reasonable or nudge the board into nudging them to realize that their behavior is not really acceptable. Um, and that's kind of where the mediation is supposed to go. It may not result in the outcome either party necessarily wants, but it should out result in outcome that both parties better understand the situation they're in and how it's supposed to be. You may not be able to punch through some of the emotional charge, just issues that people have that are kind of maybe clouding some of the more rational judgment, but it is a better stance of getting them to the point where they understand what, how this is supposed to work in association and maybe hopefully push them to be more a little reasonable. I did want to go back to something else that the common law does discuss a number of timeframes, but they're generally um, like ceilings. Like you have to respond by, documents by this time, you have to be done by this point in time, now, proxy notices by a certain time. But it, those are very, very specific. There isn't um, 
general clause for if you get a request from a homeowner, you have to respond by this regardless of what it is. And managing sometimes managing agents, they don't have any of that power whatsoever. There's some of them are just literally hired to do like three things. So we actually have a brochure on our website um, that details who is who does what generally and who you should be looking at for certain certain responsibilities. So you wouldn't ask your insurance agent to help you fix the water pipes, right? Like literally go plumb it. Um, you go ask the plumber to fix the plumbing. So we, we kind of realized that a lot of people may not fully really understand what each role these people have. So we made a brochure on it and it's on our website, it's really available 24 seven. Um, but back to your reasonable comment. Yes, I, people should be reasonable about their timeframes. I mean, certain things are more problematic than others. Say like you have a massive water pipe break, if a gas leak, that's seriously, yeah, you should get a response quickly. Um, but if you're, say you have a complaint against your upstairs neighbor for like the 15th noise violation, and that maybe only a people come through here, it's a little less, it's a little less reasonable to assume that their manager is gonna get on it immediately. Um, so you kind of need to think like, if I was in their shoes, how would I respond to 2000 people having all issues, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be, be a little less egocentric perhaps. and put yourself into the shoes of what is this person's role, what else are they dealing with, and how important is my personal request? Okay, so what if someone is, you know, like, let's go back to like, they, they requested a certain whatever document, and they're, um, they're not getting a response at all, even all the attempts, and now what, what, is, the, what is the role of RICO? Um, RICO is, um... The regulated industries complaints office mm -hmm. and they are part of the department of commerce and consumer affairs as are we basically they are both the investigative and prosecutorial branch or you know agency area department um, for dcca certain of the statutes such as the documents one that we were talking about a little earlier they specifically have the power to handle those situations. And from my understanding, anecdotally, um, it's, they're very successful. In fact, they have a complaint form on their website, and possibly on ours, um, that is specifically for documents. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that form, um, it's best to be very factual. And again, we talked about a little earlier about having something in writing. So you can fill out the form and say such and such date, you know, I emailed or I texted, and two weeks later, such and such date, I did this. You know, they have not responded to me. And at least in you know, my experience, they seem to act very quickly on these things and have a very high rate of resolution in acquiring, you know, what as long as it's you know allowed under the statute. Of acquiring the information that who is the director now of Rico? It used to be Daria. I think she's moved. Uh, Esther. Esther. Yes, Esther Brown, I believe. Um, when last I talked to Daria, I remember she said no one has ever said no to a document request once Rico steps in. Um, but they do require you to provide documentation of uh, at least I believe it's two or three attempts. And right. whatever call, I whatever calls it. I remember I've, her saying that because she wants to see the paper trail of your attempts. You know, wants to see like the emails, the, yeah. the, 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 the um, logs when you called, how many times you tried, some letters to show right. that you actually did attempt to get the documents on your own. And you're trying to, to be reasonable and patient. But yeah, yeah. You're but, right but should that fail, yeah, then Ben Rico will take your documents and move relatively quickly. And again, like Daria said, she said, do you not remember a single association that said no once, once Rico gives the call? <laughs> well, you know, it's unfortunate that it has to get to that point, you know, um, but hopefully now with mostly, most of the associations going to town square, that software platform, mm -hmm. you know, the documents, um, I mean, actually, in the very beginning, I remember one had posted um, the board packet and I had all the delinquencies on there. I go, I don't think you're supposed to post those. <laughs> you might want to reconsider, take those off. But, um, but I, but I seen it, and um, I think a lot of some 
the major maybe the majority of those document little fights might um, hopefully will disappear, you know, um, because even if it was something that I mean, it, and it should be something that the resident manager should be able to pull up for a homeowner as well, you know. But the challenging be part might be for the homeowners that are aging and they need it, because I know from for my work I've come across problems with um, with um, getting some, certain documents for um, that lenders need, you know. Mm actually been refused to get certain documents so i'm like uh this could be refused. but um we had to go you know circle around different ways just to get the document that we need. but um hopefully now that issue will be that condo doc issue will be a little bit less of a burden than it's been in the past with the software platform i mean i know i know when i was um at one condo that i owned um the, the condo docs we just printed a bunch of copies and this is before email you know so we just like had 10 sets always including house rules i said print as many copies as you can and you know and i heard one condo say well they need to pay for it i go that's a little crazy because if you want them to follow the house rules why do you want to make it hard by making them pay for a copy of the house rules give it out for free you want them to comply you know um so oh, okay. I always tell them to post everywhere that you can, and they can just log on online, you know, and just at least see it. They don't have to print it, but at least they can visibly see it on their phone or on their tablet or computer, you know. Oh, one, one thing about the house rules, though, really, is if you, when you change them, you have to let people know. Right. And if you're charging them to know about the changes you made, then it makes it harder for them to, one, you enforce in them to know it. So it really behooves associations when you do a house rule change to make them as easy as possible to get it to then well, be able but to isn't there, them a, reasonably. isn't there a review period for the house rule changes, right? There's there, a there is, there is. Right. But so, you at the same time, if you want people to know about them and then you can make a forceful and then for them to follow it, making it right. hard for them to get it, just to make it right. sense. I mean, if it was my website, I would be, this is the revised effective of this date. And that's after it's been reviewed, after it's been already gone through all the approvals, but um, and even letting them notice, and then the effective date will be out in the future, like thirty mm -hmm. days out. You know, yeah. that would be the the better way rather than just uploading it and posting it effective now. You know, that's kind of I me. Mean, that's a little bit unreasonable um, or unfair. Notice is always good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, give them thirty days notice. Gives everybody time to read it, and you know, I've told my condo, I go, you need to print and hand, hand deliver it to every single door. And also there's property managing agents like around the corner, I said, and they manage quite a few. I go deliver several to them as well so that they have it on their file for new prospective people. So mm -hmm. I think we're nearing close to our end. Any other last comments? Well, um... I think property managers should be aware if they do have the authority to, you know, be doing these, you know, transactions that RICO really does mean business. Um, they do have the ability, you know, to bring charges and have um, regarding this particular area, you know, which is then adjudicated by the real estate commission. But it's I it's did not know that it's, it's that important they have the power to bring charges. Yeah, so it's, it's important um, that everybody, you know, shoulders their responsibility um, and you know, takes care of business. I mean, it should be transparent as much as allowed by law. And I don't think people should be afraid, you know, should be like, you know, doing hide the marble or something, you know. But, you, know the, you know, the owners are entitled to, to this information um, in a reasonable manner. So, Please, you know, produce it as allowed by law. Right, right, right. Um, Dathan, um, any last comments? Yeah, if you feel like your board is just completely not helping you at all, not responding to anything at all, and has a long history of this, you're probably not the only person they're not responding to. And that kind of leads you down the path of, hey, let's go talk to the owners who feel that we need some leadership change. And there is always the option to remove one vote more Bemer has been done. I think the, um, what was the high rise above one of the e Waikiki? They kicked out their entire board in one meeting. 
and replace them all in one day. Really? So you'd be done. Really? Wow, that's, famous that's, that one meeting, wow. Wow. Yeah, well, it is. They, they are so fed up with them, they just leave them all out. Yeah, it can be done. It has been done. And if you feel that your board is, just, you have lots of problems, they're just not responding, they're not doing what their job, they're mismanaging things, you just got to motivate, um, organize with the other members of your association and boot them out. And I know sometimes it can be difficult, but it can and be done. Okay, so I think we're near our time. Um, so I think our the your um, DCCA website address should be showing up on the on the screens pretty sort of shortly. Um, but I want to thank you you both, Nathan and Carol, for um, joining me today. And I think we have another topic coming up on December second that I sent some information about. Um, I, I, all of a sudden, I'm like on this like consumer education kind of a thing, homeowner education, making sure they understand these things um, because I've been hearing a lot of complaints and um, and just you know people. I don't know if it's pandemic because everybody's got nothing better to do. I don't I don't know, but it's just been so, like all of a sudden all these all these complaints coming in through our emails. So I'm like, man more volume than I ever seen before, you know? <laughs> so thank you so much. And um, I really, really appreciate the work that you guys do, all the volume of phone calls that you get every day and um, the explaining and education that you have to do repeatedly every day to everybody that calls in. Um, I really appreciate your um, efforts in doing that and being patient and dealing with, um, especially your brand new homeowners. Um, thank you again, and I'll see you guys the next time. Thank, thank you so you much. Pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.